The Democrats' road to flipping the Senate runs straight through the South. And today, the leading Democrat in one of the most consequential races in the country, in Georgia, got a major boost. Former President Barack Obama endorsed the Reverend Raphael Warnock at Atlanta, of Atlanta's Ebenezer Baptist Church, historically Dr. King's church, in his bid to take down Senator Kelly Loeffler. A New York Times poll out yesterday showed Reverend Warnock running a close second to Loeffler in an open race. Another Democrat, Matt Lieberman, son of former Senator Joe Lieberman, got just 7 percent and is under intense pressure to get out of the race. Stacey Abrams told the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, we need Matt Lieberman to understand he's not called for this moment. We are asking for people to consolidate their support around Raphael Warnock. That's for two reasons. Luffler is an unelected senator appointed to her seat last December, so it's a special election. A candidate who receives more than 50 percent of the vote could be seated in November, giving Democrats an additional vote against the nominee to replace Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg if that vote drags into the Senate's lame duck session. The other reason, if no single candidate receives more than 50 percent, the race would move to a runoff between the top two vote getters on January 5th. And Democrats want to make sure that one of their candidates makes it into that runoff. And joining me now is the Reverend Raphael Warnock, Democratic candidate for U.S. Senate from Georgia. Uh, and I presume, um, Reverend Warnock, that there's no sign that uh, Mr. Lieberman is going to drop out, right? Have you heard any indications from his campaign that he's willing to endorse you rather than running? Well, Joy, it's great to be here with you again. I can't speak for him or anybody else in this race. Uh, I can tell you that I'm in Augusta, Georgia right now. I've been moving all across this state. I was in Savannah and Dublin the other day uh, in Brunswick, and there's a lot of momentum behind my race. Uh, I'm grateful for the endorsement of President Obama and others, uh, but I think they're responding to the momentum that we see on the ground, and I'm feeling good working hard, and I intend to deliver this seat uh, for the people of Georgia when the future for all of our children. Now, you know, there is a, a factor in this race. His name is uh, Brian Kemp, uh, the governor of Georgia, who I don't think anybody who watched the 2018 election trusts. Uh, and he's got a mini-me sitting in the secretary of state's office. This is what Stacey Abrams tweeted yesterday. 337,652 Georgians who did not vote at all in 2016 have already requested ballots. This includes 20 percent of black voters requesting 49 percent of Hispanic voters, 52 percent of AAPI voters, 67 percent of voters under 30. Change has come to Georgia. Are you confident that those people will be able to vote, given the leadership of your state? Well, there's no question that my good friend Stacey Abrams is right. The change has come to Georgia. This is not a battleground state. Georgia is the battleground state. The tip of the spear in a South that is quickly changing. And the other side knows that. That's why they're engaged in voter suppression. Look, they tried this on June 9th, and we take it seriously. We're pushing back hard. Uh, they're, they're being sued in the courts. Uh, there will be lawyers on the ground to push back hard against voter suppression. But here's the good news. Georgia voters showed up in spite of the tricks that they played in the June 9th primary. We had record voter turnout. 1.3 million Democrats showed up. Uh, they had less than a million on the other side. That's why they're engaged in voter suppression. People who are confident in their message don't engage in voter suppression. They, they trust the electorate. And so I'm going to put my trust in yeah. the electorate. They know I'm fighting for health care. And uh, I think we'll, we, look, the answer to voter suppression is massive voter turnout. That's what we intend to deliver. Indeed. Uh, your opponent, uh, one of them, Kelly Loeffler, uh, she sort of uh, styled herself as Attila the Hun, uh, that that's how right wing she is. She's campaigned with a QAnon candidate named Marjorie Taylor Greene. So she's pretty far out there. Um, not sure that she's further out there than the president of the United States. However, this was him. He was in Atlanta today. And let, let me play a little bit of what he said. Biden believes that all black Americans have to think the same way. That's what it was all about. Today's Democrat Party is run, but he doesn't know black Americans like I do. That he doesn't know black Americans like I do, it, it, it strikes me as an offensive sort of paternalistic thing to say. I don't know what you think he meant by that. He's also pretending that he can make Juneteenth a holiday, which he can't because that's Congress. What do you make of Donald Trump's pitch to black voters, which is specifically directed at black men? Listen, by now we know who Donald Trump is, and he didn't waste any time. Look, he, he came into politics 
uh, riding on uh, the idea that somehow the first black president was illegitimate. And we know the game that he was playing. He came down that escalator attacking uh, other people of color. So we know who Donald Trump is. I think it's important for us to line up, uh, to stay focused on the goal of delivering health care uh, for all in this state. We've got over 500,000 people in the Medicaid gap in Georgia. They're the ones I'm focused on. And if they succeed mm -hmm. in getting rid of the Affordable Care Act and this uh, new hearing that's coming up in the Supreme Court, that would leave 1.8 million Georgians in the Medicaid gap. And so when I think that people think about their health care and a living wage, that those are issues that transcend race and uh, speak to the heart of ordinary people, kitchen table issues. And that's what I intend to lift up in this campaign. Are, are you, uh, President Obama endorsed you. Are you expecting um, him to come in and, and uh, campaign for you? Well, I would certainly be uh, honored uh, if he did come. Uh, I've known the president for several years now, and we've been together. I've, uh, I've been at the White House, preached the closing prayer breakfast during his administration. Um, and so I'd be deeply honored. And um, look, the, the Affordable Care Act, is, is imperiled in this moment. That's a big part of the work he's done. I think we need to strengthen it. And so what I look forward to, to doing is being a partner in that work. Reverend Raphael Warnock, best of luck to you, sir. Um, really appreciate you taking some time tonight. Thank you.